This is Marketplace. Oh my God. Back on the case. Is your jewelry toxic? So all of these are really dangerous. I would not allow my daughter to put a sample in her mouth. Sold in Canada, made in China. He uses cadmium, and why? Cheap. Cheap. As a consumer, as a parent, I don't think you do understand, actually. So I'd like to finish my thought, and then I'll go outside. Plus, the new government crackdown. Marketplace goes in, finds elevated levels of cadmium. Health Canada has moved. This is your Marketplace. See? What's that for? Stella, Sophia, and Lucia. Look at it. 12-year-old friends <laughs> who love to shop. I like this chain. I like that one the best. Hi. Hi, I'm David. Really good to meet you guys. Do you think you could each buy a hundred dollars worth of jewelry today? Definitely, yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. We're gonna meet back here when you're done. Good luck. Have fun. We'll see ya. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. They don't know it yet, but they're part of a marketplace test. We're sending them into three leading fashion accessory stores. First up, Arden. Oh my god. Oh, I love this color so much. Next, they head to H&M. It's a bit much. What kind of like? I guess it's a lot of And finally, Aldo. I already see a couple stuff I like. Thank you. Hey, and my phone. Hi, how'd you guys make out? Good. Good? Okay, let's see. What'd you get? So here's the bad news. Right. I'm gonna take it all away from you. But here's why. We wanna test it. Just see if there's anything wrong with it and then we're gonna get back together with you and your parents. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right, now I take away. I'm the Grinch. <laughs> we also do some shopping of our own. Forever 21, Claire's, Old Navy, Dollarama, the Disney Store, and Sears. We wanna know if the jewelry we and the girls bought contains any toxic metals like lead. We're taking it all to this lab at the University of Toronto. Mike Gorton and Miriam Diamond are with the Department of Earth Sciences. Let's see if that makes any difference. They're using the same technology as Health Canada. First up, this purple ring from H&M. So we're now scanning through the X-ray spectrum. You can already see a small peak here. Uh, it's probably tin. When it comes to lead, turns out all the pieces are safe. But when they test this Aldo bracelet, the peaks show something else. Yeah, they're slightly shifted. I ask the computer what it thinks everything is, and sure enough, cadmium, 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 and cadmium. Ah. Cadmium? Uh, cadmium's a metal that can be very toxic if ingested. It can damage kidney, liver, immune function. Basically, any major system in your body can be harmed by cadmium. James Van Loon is the director of risk management at Health Canada's consumer safety branch. Our principal concern is for this behavior of mouthing stuff, uh, chewing on it, sucking on it for extended periods of time, potentially even swallowing it. Back in 2011, the government notices some companies using cadmium as an alternative to lead. We identified an emerging issue of cadmium in children's jewelry in items like that. So they propose strict new guidelines. 130 parts per million, we think, so that's a very low number. It really means that you can't add any cadmium to children's jewelry. But are guidelines enough? Four years after that announcement, our tests show this Aldo bracelet isn't the only piece with high levels of cadmium. Time to share the results with the girls and their parents. So, have any of you heard of cadmium? No. 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 Cadmium? You've heard of cadmium. Very poisonous. Very poisonous. Do you think we found cadmium? Hopefully Hope not. not. <laughs> Let's Hope take a look not. at Arden. Earrings. Who bought those? Anyone remember? You. Remember them? The test found cadmium. Jeez. These red Arden earrings, nearly 3,400 times over the kids' jewelry guidelines. Who bought this? I did. You did? 
So the test found cadmium in it. This Arden blue triangle pendant is 99.6% cadmium, the highest ever reported in Canada. Hold up. What do you think? All good? I don't no. know. I don't know. I don't know anymore. All right. Bracelets. Who bought this? Um, I think that was me. The sparkly crystals in this Aldo bracelet test at nearly 15 times the safe amount of cadmium. Had you ever thought that this might be a problem buying from a store like Aldo? No. Because it's Aldo, like you, it's got the brand behind it. And you're thinking, they should be watching what goes into the product. There's one more. <laughs> <laughs> Who bought those? Oh. <laughs> These Aldo bow tie earrings nearly 40 times over the Health Canada guidelines. Wow, wow that's right. All the jewelry from H&M turns out to be safe. Same for the other stores. But take a look at these anchor earrings and watermelon pendant from Arden. They all contain high levels of cadmium. And remember that Aldo bracelet? Its multicolor charm, nearly 80% cadmium. If that was on my wrist and I was holding a baby and the baby sort of put its mouth on my wrist, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought twice about that, actually. When you guys go shopping, do you ever consider something like this? No. no. And why is that? Because I just assume that places know what's safe and what's not. Like, I'm not going to go to, like, a little tiny place in an alley and look for jewelry. <laughs> I'm going to go to, like, stores and malls or, like, well-established stores. Somebody knows about it. We're not the first people to find out because it was part of the manufacturing process. Uh, so clearly, we need to understand what's coming in. So how did toxic cadmium get in all that jewelry? The back of the tag says made in China. So that's where we're heading. Our investigation begins here in the international trade city of Iwu. We're meeting someone who's agreed to be our guide. In China, even if you say something or you promise something, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, you know, you're going to get what you've asked for. Adam Gilborn's business, Easy IMEX, helps foreign companies import goods from China. His jewelry said sort of small fry. He Generally, says yeah. if you want those goods to be Generally, safe, the... you have to start with the right manufacturer. Neo Glory it's makes fine. products for big name brands. Today, they're making jewelry for guests. What if you're a buyer and you put out a contract that says you can't have cadmium? Is that your guarantee? Um, you need to have a presence in the manufacturer uh, at all times during your production run. Um, to be honest, that's the only way that you can 100% guarantee uh, that you're going to get the product that you want. China has its own rules about cadmium, even stricter than Canada's. And they apply to all jewellery, not just children's. This factory even has its own lab that tests the raw material and the finished product for cadmium. Do they ever find cadmium in their raw materials? Sometimes. So they actually do find. Yes. You, they do find cadmium yes. sometimes in their raw material. Yes. They catch it with the lab yes. and send it back. Yes, send it back. It's a very good start. Um, obviously, we came here and they're already uh, testing, and it seems that they're testing, you know, constantly every day. And so when we find jewellery on Canadian shelves that's way in excess of that, what does it tell you about those factories? Um, it tells me that they certainly don't have a laboratory, or, and if they have, they've certainly not used it or ignored it. If the jewellery didn't come from here, what kind of factory could it have come from? We're led to this residential back alley. It's small. A rented ground floor apartment, less visible safety precautions, and some of the work even happens in the backyard. He uses cadmium? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. And why? Cheap. Cheap. It's cheaper to use cadmium. Yeah. 
So how is it cheap? The manager tells us the melting point of cadmium is lower than zinc. They can use a lower temperature to melt it into the mold, saving on energy costs. So we specifically uh, say we need the cadmium. They, the buyers say we need cadmium. Yeah, that's pretty company. Yeah, yes. And why do they say that? Because they want a cheaper price. So something like this. Yeah. Is this, is the metal here? Just 10% cadmium and 90% zinc, or? This is 100%. This is, it's all cadmium. As we're talking, they get a delivery, a van full of cadmium ready to be made into jewelry. We asked the manager if he's concerned about the health effects of cadmium on consumers or his workers. Uh, he said that he knows about uh, ca cadmium is uh, dangerous for the people. He knows cadmium is dangerous yes, for people. Yes, and also yeah. his worker knows about that. Uh, yeah. And the, but but uh, both of them, they want to survive. They want to earn money. That's yeah. the reason they are still producing that. You surprised by what we've just seen and heard? No, I'm not surprised in the slightest. He gets the orders from the trading companies or from other larger factories. And uh, he basically makes whatever, uh, whatever the trading company requests he makes. Most of the costume jewelry imported to Canada comes from right here in Iwu, often sourced from this massive wholesale market where buyers and retailers hunt for deals. So we hunt for answers. Could we buy jewelry made with cadmium here? Marketplace follows the trail. The number you have dialed is not in service. Searching for answers from stores you trust. This is your marketplace. Because all that glitters should not be sold. Iwu, China, home to one of the largest wholesale markets in the world. How easy would it be here to order jewelry made with toxic cadmium? Uh, this is uh, six RMB. Six RMB right now. We don't want to have the cadmium. Will be 5.5. So we can get we can get a little bit off the price. Yes. By putting cadmium in. Yes. We've been in this market for not even three minutes, and it's taken us no time at all to find someone who will use cadmium. Uh, instead of the regular components uh, if we want to get it cheaper. It's going to cost us one yuan more if we want this free of cadmium and lead. This already have the cadmium. And this this has cadmium. And they said they don't produce for without the cadmium. They don't make it without cadmium. Yes. What about that toxic jewelry we bought back in Canada at Aldo and Arden? We ask around. Those are a little bit yeah. similar to this. Yes, right? But we can't find it here. So we head to Shanghai. Our search through shipping records leads us here. No sign of the Aldo jewelry, but Arden, we find multiple orders shipped from here in 2015. We trace one of those orders to this building. I don't know if it's the same company. 15, 15, 15, 15, yeah. That's 1502. Yeah. But that's a different company now. The records show Jingtong International Trading Company shipped fashion jewelry to Arden in June. Yeah. Just, yeah, okay, so almost one year. Yeah, almost yeah. one year. But we're told, apparently, they left a year ago. Back in Iwu, records say another company, Oriel, sent necklaces to Arden last summer. This is the address? Yes. Yeah. It's a home, not a business, never dealt with a Canadian company. Okay. And finally, Chin Huan Jewelry also sent necklaces to Arden in May and June. Neighbors tell us they closed down about a month ago. So we try calling the number on the sign. Message. The number you have dialed is not in service. Please check the number and dial again. Okay, so here you go. Not in service, locked up here. No way to trace them. What does it mean if Aldo and Arden, these companies that do trade in Canada, 
that we find cadmium in jewelry on their shelves? Um, quite frankly, it means they, they're very sloppy with what they're doing and they don't have uh, control over their supply chain in China. Back at home, we show Health Canada some of what we saw. It doesn't seem sufficient to me to accept somebody's assertion that this product is compliant with the rules in Canada. That is something that you as an importer really need to verify on your own. But I'm left thinking that not everybody is. Uh, that is, it is the responsibility of everybody in the industry to make sure their products don't pose a danger to human health and safety. So how dangerous is the jewelry 12-year-old Stella and her friends bought? We asked her and her mom to travel to Montreal to Ecole Polytechnique. Hi. Hello. Dr. Gerald Zagary is going to help us find out. There are no known risks from just touching, but what could happen if a child swallows this earring from Arden or the charm from Stella's Aldo bracelet? These glass beakers mimic the inside of a toddler's stomach. How much cadmium could be absorbed into their body? What's allowed in drinking water is six micrograms uh, per day for a child. We found 1,300 micrograms. Wow. And then would potentially end up in the blood and in the organs. Wow, so, that, so all of these are really dangerous. I would uh, not uh, allow my daughter, for example, to put such a sample in her mouth. We share our findings with Aldo. They tell us they're taking steps to remove the jewelry from stores and are reviewing their jewelry testing. Arden says it will investigate, and it's not the first time. Arden has had to recall jewelry five times for lead or cadmium. I catch up with Stella and her mom outside a mall in Montreal. We asked Arden to come on camera and they said no. What do you think of that? It's I wish really I could, surprising. Yeah, I wish I could say I was surprised by that, but I'm not. Okay, well, we're not going to accept no. We're going to go to them right now. Really? Yeah. Would you like to come? Yeah. All right, yeah. let's go. Okay. Can you please wait outside? Can you tell us who you get your Can supplies you from? Please, you on private This is from China. Can you tell me who your supplier is? This is your marketplace. The real deal on your marketplace. Toxic cadmium in children's jewelry, made in China, sold by Canadian chains like Arden. Some of the highest levels we found were in their products. Arden's loss prevention director, Angie Dalios, comes out. I understand that, but you have a necklace here that is 99.6% cadmium. Do you have an appointment with someone? We don't have an appointment. We've tried, and nobody's been willing to talk to us. You have something on your shelves that is toxic. You're going to have to wait outside, though. Can I ask anything further about what you're going to do in relation to this? Can you wait outside, please? Can you tell us who the supplier is? Like, I don't mind waiting outside while they figure out who to, they, who's going to come and speak to us. Outside, yeah, we heard you. We heard you. I just have to say, though, as a consumer, as a parent, I don't think you do understand, actually. So I'd like to finish my thought, and then I'll go outside. You're that I find it. Yeah, I, I heard you. Outside. I heard you. I also am not impressed that you're not even going to tell us who's going to come out and speak to us. We wait outside. Then they come out to hand us a statement. Our suppliers have been advised that the cadmium content in all of our jewelry must respect a maximum 130 milligram per kilogram threshold. I don't care what they tell their suppliers because I don't care whether it's the supplier that's making the mistake or they're making a mistake. At the end of the day, it's this company that's selling it to, to my kids. So it's their name on the product. We have sent inspectors out to speak with our Dan and Aldo about the test results that you had. Got to figure out to what extent these may actually be being marketed straight to kids. Some of the products that you had identified had things were seemed kind of more childlike to me, the, the anchors and the hearts and whatnot. But isn't everything in a store like that marketed? I, I don't kids? think I don't know if it is. I don't know how attractive some of that stuff is to kids under 15 compared to China makes it universal for kids and adults. The Europeans do the same thing. They combine both kids and adult jewelry. Why not just extend the guidelines to be regulations for everyone? Yeah, we're, we're very focused on those products that we think kids are actually likely to swallow. We're not aware of any incidents relating to 
cadmium in jewelry, like costume jewelry, mm -hmm. resulting in injury. So as a parent, I don't want to be the one whose kid goes to hospital to prompt you to go and take action. Yeah. And as, as a regulator, I'm suggesting that you should probably try to keep age-appropriate materials in the hands of your kids. What if it turned out that costume jewelry that your 11-year-olds bought was 50 or 80 or almost 100% cadmium? Yeah, I probably, if I knew that that was 100% cadmium, I probably would say, you know, Sophie, hand that over. It's been a year since we first broadcast this story, and now Health Canada is moving to finally turn those cadmium guidelines into law. Means it'll be able to take swifter action when recalling products from store shelves. We catch up with Mike and Miriam at the University of Toronto. This is a fabulous example of how great investigative journalism results in changes. Marketplace goes in, finds elevated levels of cadmium in the marketplace. It, the Canadian public is now aware of this. Health Canada has moved. And Ardan tells us it's now making changes too. It's pulled all that toxic jewelry marketplace identified off their shelves. And it's going to have more stringent monitoring of its supply chain. They're going to be employing third party testers. And that's great. They're upgrading their uh, product quality standards and they will have written compliance guarantees. Um, and they're orienting the, um, the compliance guarantees to adults as well as children. Arden now acknowledges some of their adult jewelry may also appeal to children. Arden has really responded to what's happened with the marketplace investigation. They're demonstrating good corporate responsibility and that's exactly what they should be doing and that's what they should have been doing all along. Next week on Marketplace. Looks like chicken, tastes like chicken, but how much of it is really chicken? So they've restructured it and, and kind of reformed it. Marketplace fires up the grill. When I make chicken at home, I don't use anywhere near the number of yep. ingredients. 48 more ingredients than I expected. Would a diabetic person know about sugar and chicken? Putting your favorite fast food grilled chicken to the test. We shouldn't be able to call it chicken.